what I what I call a one of a kind experience. So I would like to introduce myself. My name is Precious Mklang. I recently graduated with an MSc in ultrasound and I'm working at Parrenyatwa as the sonographer in charge there. So today I'm going to be presenting on the role of ultrasound in Haivan, which is uh, HIV associated nephropathy. Um, HIV and AIDS is a major public health problem in sub-Saharan sub, sub Africa. Hence the need to really be well-versed with imaging of uh, HIV positive patients because each and every day we are going to be um, scanning or doing uh, a, an ultrasound examination for any patient who has uh, HIV and, and AIDS or is HIV positive. So uh, we need to be well-versed or well-equipped uh, with the knowledge or know-how of how to use ultrasound to the best so that we can have the best patient outcome. So we also need to know the role of ultrasound and its limitation, its limitations in terms of imaging and uh, in assisting in the clinical management of HIV positive patients. So we all know that HIV is, is seen or is regarded as, a, as harbored in the kidneys. Mostly clinicians have said that it's, it mainly affects the renal system. It's harbored in the renal system. So um, it's bound to alter the renal function of HIV positive patients. And it will manifest um, depending on the, the, the stage of infection. So you are not going to find uh, generally patients who are already on treatment, you are going to come across a lot of uh, HIV affected people who are recently diagnosed, some who have been taking medication or who have changed from um, the first, a, a, a first line or second line. So we, we, we all need to know the renal manifestations uh, in terms of when we are applying ultrasound. So we need to also appreciate the fact that the manifestations can be due to HIV in itself as a disease or due to the, um, the drugs that the patients will be taking that might cause the, the uh, cellular function or cellular disruption um, of the renal cells. So according to Rao et al. in 1984, Haivan was described as a proteinuria with a progression to end stage renal disease. It results from focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, which causes ectasia of renal pyramids, resulting in deposition of calcium. So, sonologic appearances in Haivan have been correlated with histologic findings and shows that ultrasound alone is an acceptable single predictor of this disease. Uh, based on this evidence, ultrasound can be used solely to evaluate the kidneys, especially in resource constrained environments like ours. So there you can see it, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, ultrasound is going to be playing a huge role because not all uh, departments are equipped with uh, state of the art imaging equipment. We only have the general ultrasound machines, um, maybe the, those ones that function with BMOD. So at least you can be able to image um, the renal system of any patient without using a lot of uh, income, which is very uh, convenient for our environment. Um, so the role of ultrasound in Haivan is to lo uh, locate, to outline, um, to see the outline of the kidneys, the shape of the kidneys, the size, the cortical thickness, uh, vascularity, parenchymal echogenicity, and presence of any ab abnormalities in the plane of the kidneys. So we are all doing um, 
a comparison in terms of the parenchymal echogenicity of the kidneys with respect to the liver and the spleen. So we apply what we call the second um, acronym. So S will stand for size. So we all know that uh, the, the most appropriate or acceptable way we get the size of a kidney is when we measure the length of the kidney from uh, superior to inferior is outlined here. Uh, I hope you can see my arrow is outlined here on, the, on this picture that shows the length of the kidney. So you can only get this image or in longitudinal section. And then in that, in that same plane, we are also able to see the parenchymal thickness. Okay. And then we appreciate the echogenicity. That's when we are comparing with the liver and or with the spleen that is for the left kidney. So for the right one, we'll be comparing with the liver and the left one will be comparing with the spleen. So C will stand for the collecting system. Is there any hydronephrosis um, in the kidney? Um, is there any hydroureta? Do you see that uh, on ultrasound? And also we check for the outline and also for any notable lesions that are present. In, in on the kidney. They can either be a cyst or a, a calcification or calculi, if you want. Um, then as for Doppler, we need to see if the kidney, if the kidneys are well vascularized um, to check for thrombosis, to check uh, if there is adequate perfusion ischemia, all right, and then we check also for the surroundings. That's to account for the S here on the uh, seconds, on the seconds. So we also check for perinephric fluid um, or any other collections surrounding the kidney. Okay, so in, um, in HIV associated nephropathy, we are highly likely to find um, nephromegaly that is um, an enlarged kidney. And we are also going to see increased renal cortical echogenicity. Um, and with or no poor cortical medullary differentiation. We can also see in some uh, patients what we call medullary ne nephrocalcinosis and, and or renal mass lesions that's a cyst or renal calculi and also an irregular outline. So this might not even okay at the same time, all of them, all the six of them. Some you tend to appreciate that there is, non, there is a normal sized kidney, but it has got an increased renal echogen, cortical echogenicity um, and it has got a good cortical medullary no, if it has increased the renal, renal cortical echogenicity, it has poor cortical medullary differentiation. And also, you might not even see a renal mass or a cortical cyst or renal calcula. So it might present as, um, as independently or altogether. All the findings, they will uh, exist at the same time. So we also have what we call grading of cortical echogenicity whilst we are looking at uh, uh, the renal system that has been affected by HIV. Uh, we have grade zero, where we have a normal kidney, which is what a renal cortex that is hypoechoic as compared to the liver. That's the normal ultrasound finding. And we also have grade one, where the renal cortex is the same, that is isoechoic with the liver. And then we have grade two, when the renal cortex is mildly to moderately more echogenic than the liver with the same, with some loss of cortical medullary distinction. I, I think in clinical practice, we have come across that where we cannot differentiate whether 
is the cortical echogenicity is in between being lost or being retained. And then we have grade three, which is the obvious one, where we have the renal cortex being severely echogenic with complete loss of cortical medullary distinction. So this is um, a, a pictorial presentation of how we measure our kidney length. And also uh, that's going to say, the, that's going to highlight the standard size of a, a normal kidney, which is 12 centimeters. Any kidney that ranges above 12 centimeters, that kidney is enlarged. Okay, so it also depends with the uh, body makeup of the patient. And also uh, we are assuming that if you are um, imaging an HIV patient, there should be a baseline image or a baseline ultrasound scan that would have, that patient would, would have had before treatment so that you can compare if there is uh, nephromegaly or if there is no nephromegaly. Um, here we have got a pictorial uh, presentation of poor cortical medullary differentiation. You can see that um, that cortex is hyperechoic as compared to the liver, which is hypoechoic. So we have increased cortical echogenicity and we can no longer uh, differentiate between the cortex and the, the medullary uh, or the renal sinus, which is usually hyperechoic. So um, in terms of the echogenicity, the cortical echogenicity, we need to compare it with the liver and the spleen. All right. So we also have uh, instances where when imaging an HIV patient, we can find uh, lesions like cyst, intramedullary cysts, or we can have calcifications. So we need also to highlight on them so that the clinicians will know the extent of renal damage and the extent of the renal disease, that the, um, the extent of the nephropathy um, that's being associated with HIV. So this one, as you can see, most of, most of the times uh, in my experience, I've had difficulties when imaging patients with HIV uh, because the, the images tend to be very poor, but uh, sometimes we have to compromise for, for diagnosis. It's better we get the diagnostic picture than the quality. As long we ha as we have uh, what, we will, what will help the clinicians to manage the patient, that's better. So we can see and appreciate that this kidney has got an irregular outline. Um, it's actually hazy. You can't really appreciate its borders. So you come across those, um, those challenges when imaging patients. So I would like to share with you a case, a special case that has driven me to do this presentation. Um, I met an HIV positive 27 year old male who had a history of defaulting highly active uh, antiretroviral treatment and presented in the ultrasound department with a KUB request form complaining of hematuria, persistent edge to urinate and constitutional symptoms like loss of weight, fatigue, malaise. Um, so on the imaging part, um, the ultrasound showed that he had normal sized kidneys, but he had hyperechoic medullary pyramids instead of anechoic or hypoechoic. And also the, the kidney had uh, posterior acoustic enhancement and significant cortical thinning. So I'm going to show you, to share uh, the images that I got. Uh, like, I, I, like I highlighted, um, bear with me, the images are of poor quality, but I would want to emphasize the point that the diagnostic value of the image is what matters most 
as long as it's giving the picture of what exactly is going on. So here, you can actually appreciate that the size of the kidney was normal. It was 104, 104.84 um, millimeters. And we had this cortical thinning, significant cortical thinning here. But you can actually appreciate that the cortex was not hyperechoic, it was actually hypoechoic, but a bit in, in comparison with the liver, it wasn't um, as hyper, it wasn't hypoechoic as, as we would want it to be in a normal circumstance. It was iso, almost isoechoic to the liver. Um, I also noted a, a, a renal cyst um, here. And also there was a lot of, um, you can see this uh, hyperechoic uh, deposits in the, in the renal pyramids. These areas are supposed to be hypoechoic or anechoic in a normal kidney. But here they are hyperechoic as much as the renal sinus is. And you can actually see the borders of the cortex extending into the medullary, uh, into the si uh, renal sinus. So, um, like I said, there's cortical thinning here. Um, on the left, it was six millimeters where in a normal kidney, cortical thin thickness will be around 20 millimeters. Um, on the right, it was 7.6, which was very significant cortical thinning. So on doing um, research, I got to note that this was a presentation of medullary nephrocalcinosis. So it also presents in people who are HIV positive. And in fact, in pe people who have defaulted. So if a patient has defaulted on their HIV medication, that means their immune system is compromised and it's prone to any attack. So it starts either, it starts to attack itself, its body cells or um, the, the, it, it, it's no longer able to fight for itself from infections. So, um, it's also called the medullary nephrocalcinosis is also called medullary sponge disease, um, sorry, medullary sponge kidney. And it's also as a result of structural abnormality of the collecting tubules. We are assuming that this uh, abnormality is being caused by the um, compromised immune system. So the tubules will become ectactic. That means they will dilate and um, they will give room to cal calculus uh, deposition or calcium deposition in the tubules. And this will cause uh, what we call nephrocalcinosis. And it will cause an increased echogenicity um, in the renal medulla. So ultrasound is more sensitive than CT scan in detecting this finding. Okay, um, in ending, I would want to share that it is imperative that we recommend histopathologic correlation to improve the treatment of HIV um, affected patients. So if we know, or if we get these findings, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the patient is going into renal failure because now we understand that um, nef nephropathy could be related to um, the HIV drug toxicity. So we now need the histopathology to confirm our diagnosis that this kidney is really diseased or this kidney is already in failure. So we also need to standardize these ultrasound findings for, for the setting, especially in Africa. We have poor, um, a reference literature. We have to rely with Western uh, literature so that we can come up with conclusions. So why not uh, have a, a, an information bank 
where we discuss ultrasound findings in different um, highly active uh, art treatment so that so that we are able so that we are able to 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 really uh, contribute in, in, in a positive way uh, in the management of HIV positive patients. Um, we also need to have that uh, information bank to see um, even in any other organs, not only for the ren renal uh, system, we were talking about the hepatic system, how does it affect uh, HIV patients? What are the findings in defaulters? What are the findings in uh, patients, HIV affected patients who have comorbidities like diabetes and hypertension. So um, those are the things that got me to think, what can we do? How can we provide the solutions to these issues? Um, with this, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. This is the end of my presentation. <laughs>